I'm really excited about all of you who are here tonight. You didn't take a chance on the radio cutting off on you. You wanted to hear it all yourself. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. I'm grateful to have my daddy here tonight, as always, supporting this first broadcast. Genesis chapter 2. I want to read one verse, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. What did he breathe? The breath of life the breath of life and man became a living soul. I want to talk from the subject waiting to exhale. Ask the person next to you, neighbor, are you still waiting to exhale? Amen. There will be no shoop shoop in here tonight. According to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the text that we just read, God is concerned about our ability to exhale. As a matter of fact, I'll go on record tonight saying that God wants us to exhale. God is so concerned about our ability to exhale until after he made man. The scripture seems to make a special point of the fact that it was God who first breathed into man and gave man his ability to exhale. The scriptures teach us that Adam was created by God. And you all, Adam was just lying there. Adam was just a corpse. It was not until God breathed into him. Adam was just laying there waiting to exhale. Matter of fact, he was waiting to inhale. And it was not until God breathed into Adam that Adam became a living soul. And so you all, even before we start this message tonight, if it was God that gave man the ability to inhale and exhale, then we should know automatically that our ability to exhale should, should be directly related to our relationship with God. How is some Negro going to give you the ability to exhale when he didn't give you the ability to inhale? Huh, help me out somebody. I know you know by now that there was a popular movie entitled Waiting to Exhale. How many of you just happened to see that movie? All right, praise the Lord. Well, those of you who did see it, you, you can help me out a little bit. But there's, how many of you didn't see it? All right, those of you who still live in the 1930s, Those of you who did see it, maybe you can help me out a little bit and make sure that I am right as I lay out what the premise was. The movie deals with women as they relate and interact with men. Am I right about that? As a matter of fact, the basic premise is that um, women sort of go through life looking for Mr. Right. This movie dealt with these four women and how they acted and interacted with men. And, and they seem to suggest that women sort of go through life waiting on a perfect relationship. Women sort of search and look for their knight in shining armor. And the movie seems to suggest that women sort of hold their breath watching and waiting, hoping and praying, so that when Mr. Wright finally comes along, that breath 
that they've been holding can finally be let go because they have now found their reason to exhale. A am I right about that? It, 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 it just seems to be what the movie is suggesting. Because what the movie is saying is that what this woman has been waiting for has finally happened. What she's been looking for, she has finally found. What she has been holding her breath about has finally manifested itself and now she has a reason to exhale. As I watched this movie and as its theme became clearer to me I felt that it could send a dangerous signal to the world in general but especially to women in particular anybody here gonna help me tonight because if I am correct in understanding the author's assumption Reverend Carey that you cannot exhale or you cannot breathe a sigh of relief until you are holding on to who and what you've been waiting for. I got a lot of problems with that. I, I said if it's true that you can't just really be free, if it's true that you just really can't be who you are, if it's true that you really can't be happy, that you really can't have joy, that you're really not complete until you are holding on to somebody, I got a lot of problems with that. And so you all, those of you in our listening audience and those of you who are here, and I want you to know that I love you and I thank God for you, the first thing I came to tell you tonight is that you cannot define yourself by anything exterior. You cannot define yourself by the things that you have. We've fallen into a trap, you all, and we have let our society sort of dictate to us, and now we are defining or we're finding our personhood in who and what we possess. We have started to feel good about ourselves if we got some good stuff, and to feel bad about ourselves if our stuff, according to other people's definition, is not so good. As a matter of fact, who, who is the world that we have allowed them to define us anyway? So we've fallen into this trap where if a woman has a man, then she feels good about herself. Because she feels that she's somebody and she's desirable and she's admirable if she has a man. And if she doesn't have a man, she doesn't feel good about herself. Because people are defining themselves by the things that they have. That's why men define themselves by the kind of car that they drive. Oh yeah, you all, men try, women, you do know that men try to impress you by the kind of car that they drive. And you all, men, 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 men spend more time with their cars than they do with their women. Man will get out there on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock rubbing and shining and buffing and blowing and spit shining and he'll rub on his car longer than he'll rub on his woman. Because he's defining himself by what he has you 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 all um we do that we do that with clothes that that's why we've gotten off in the name brand clothes huh that's why we keep the tag on coach purses we want folk to know this is a coach this is not a roach it is a coach it is not an almost coach it is a coach huh We, we define ourselves by, by, by stuff, huh? And, and if we can't get the real stuff, we get the almost stuff. If we can't, if we can't get the Giorgio, somebody will say, well, this is primo. This is almost Giorgio. As a matter of fact, it's just like Giorgio. The only thing that's different is the price. Come on, help me out, somebody. 
I bought my boy a shirt one time and I was getting ready to cut the tag off because he was walking outside with the tag on his shirt. And when I was a boy growing up, we just we learned that you didn't walk around with tags on your clothes. So I got scissors. I was getting ready to cut the tag off. And he said, Daddy, you can't do that. This is a starter tag. In other words, how people going to know that it's a starter? And you all, we actually buy things. And we define ourselves based on the stuff that we have. Am I right about it? And we have allowed society, you all, and we are starting as believers to fall into that trap to define ourselves based on name brands. You walk up and you have a suit on and somebody say, what is it? What is it? It's a suit. Whose suit is it? Man! Huh? Help me. They, they, they want to know the, the brand, the name. Who is the person? Don't, don't make a difference who they were. Well, they sold it to me. Huh? Help me, somebody. You know what kind of suit it is. It's my, it's a Jewtown original. Women, I just stopped by to tell you tonight and it's been this month of March with our single friends to tell you that you cannot define yourself based on whether or not you have a man. You cannot start feeling good about yourself or bad about yourself based on whether or not you are in a relationship. Just because you have a man doesn't make you special. And just because you don't have a man doesn't make you incomplete. Huh? You know, don't, don't, don't start thinking that just because you have a man, you all that. Huh? Elton John got a man. <laughs> huh, help me somebody that, 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 that don't make you all that to define yourself and to feel good about yourself on the basis of whether or not you have a man is the worst thing you can do tonight I've seen women in a relationship and you can tell when they're in a relationship I've seen women in a relationship dressed up, made up, permed up, firmed up, tied up, sucked up. Huh? Just, just got it going on. I've seen the same women out of a relationship Hair undone, face unmade, weave disconnected, fingernails broke off. Rather than sucked in, bloated out. I came to tell you tonight, you are the same person. And you have the same value. And God loves you just as much whether you are in a relationship or whether you are out of one. The same God who made you loves you just as much. And as a matter of fact, he can do more for you out of a relationship than he can with you in a relationship and that's somebody else's man. I wish I had some help tonight. I said he could do more for you out of a relationship if you're out of a relationship than he can when you're in a relationship and that's somebody else's man. Huh, help me out somebody. Don't you let these men run this game on you about the fact that they, they really don't love their wife and that, that really ain't... I'm going to get back to that in a minute. 
Listen, God made you and God made you special and God does not intend for you to share a man. Shame on you that you have to walk around sharing a man. The wife get him on Easter, you get him on Christmas. She get him Mother's Day, you get him Father's Day. You're not happy in a relationship like that. You better start loving you for you. You better start loving you because you are who you are. You better get up and run your own bath water and sit in your own bath water and perfume your own self and make up your own self and walk around and look at your own self and feel good about yourself for yourself and stop defining yourself and let some man tell you who you are. You know who you are because you're God's child. You're God's daughter. You're God's son. You better stop letting these Negroes define you. You better stop letting them let, tell you, you somebody, baby, because you with me. Listen, it does not mean, this is somebody's word tonight, it does not mean that something is wrong with you because you don't have a man. What it means is something is wrong with the men you've been around. Why will you accept why would you accept the premise that something must be wrong with you without looking over the room saying, mm, something must be wrong with them? Because you know what it is? They don't know good stuff when they see it. I have a friend, I have a friend, Rochelle, who was trying to introduce me to some of the finer things in life. And so my friend took me to an antique shop, trying to, you know, raise my little culture a little bit, trying to introduce me to some of the finer things in life. We, we, we left from over the one side where the antiques were, and we started looking at art and painting. And I was standing there, and I had my cellular phone, and I was talking to a third friend. He said, where are you all at? I said, oh, Bobby got me looking at this junk. And a lady, a lady who ran the art gallery came up to me and said, sir, she heard what I said, you know. She said, you know, they always talk like that, you know, you got me. Sir, sir, this is not junk. Sir, this is a Picasso. Sir, this is the Rembrandt. Then she handed me this little, little, little funny looking object. She said, sir, this is one of a kind. And just because you don't have appreciation for it, it does not make it junk. And I came to tell you today that just because the Negroes that you've been hanging out with don't have an appreciation for you, you better start looking at them and say, Sir, this is a one of a kind. Sir, this is a Picasso. Sir, this is a Rembrandt. This is a one of a kind. And you just don't know fine art when you see it. You see, You've been messing around with those pleather Negroes for so long so they don't know leather. You've been messing around with those cotton men so long so they don't know silk when they see it. You got to start feeling good about yourself. It's not that you are bad. It's just that they don't know good stuff. Shake somebody's hand and say they just don't know good stuff. Don't, don't, don't define yourself. Don't, don't, don't go around defining yourself based on the stuff that you have. You have to know who you are, what you're made of. Huh? I had dinner one night with Michael Jordan. I didn't say I had dinner at Michael Jordan's restaurant. I said I had dinner one night with Michael Jordan. And when I came home, I told my kids, I said, you know, you know, had dinner tonight with Jordan. And so after I was able to convince them that I was not talking about Reverend Jordan, a children's pastor, I said, what Jordan? I said, Michael Jordan. First thing they wanted to know was, Daddy, where is his autograph? I said, I didn't get no autograph. Daddy, you mean you've been with Michael Jordan for the last two hours and didn't get no autograph? I said, no. Why would I get an autograph? To show people. Well, you all, the reason I do that, listen, I told them, I've been with everybody from Bill Clinton to skip on 63rd Street. I 
They ain't asked nobody for their autograph, and the reason they didn't is because when we go around showing off autographs, what we're trying to say is somehow that we're special because we just happen to be in the company of somebody that other people know. And so some kind of way we try to make that add to our self-worth. And I don't go around trying to use other people to add to my self-worth. I know who I am. I'm the same person before dinner as I was after dinner. I don't have to go around trying to add to my self-worth. And besides, I was kind of upset once Michael Jordan found out who I was that he didn't ask for my autograph. I baptize more people than he has. I preach more sermons than he has. I've been a professional longer than he has. I open up the doors of the church more Sundays than he has. He should have asked for my autograph. Listen, don't define yourself by the things that you have. Anybody can get a car. Anybody can get a house. Anybody can get a watch. Anybody can get some clothes and anybody can get a man because the prostitutes do it five and six times a night. You cannot get a reason to exhale from anything exterior. And those of you who are in our radio audience, I'm telling you now, if you want this tape, call 821-4300. The next thing I want to tell you about this whole interior, exterior thing is that everything that is exterior will pass away and it is subject to hurt you. Tell the person next to your neighbor, exterior things can hurt you. Oh yeah, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4 and 18. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Look this way as I tell you, you all tonight, everything that you can see, feel, hold, and touch is temporary. And if your happiness is based on these things, your happiness can only last as long as these things. The danger in letting exterior things make you exhale, the danger in letting Negroes make you happy, the danger in letting a man bring you joy is that a Negro is subject to change on you any day. Huh? He can be fine Monday. Everything can be going great. Things can be well, all right with the world. And on Tuesday, he'll swear he forgot your phone number. Huh, help me out somebody. Now ladies, listen now, I'm telling you now, Everything that is exterior is subject to hurt you, and that is why you cannot put your all or your ultimate trust in them or in man. Listen, a man will tell you anything. I said a man will tell you anything. He will look at you in your eyes and say, now baby, it ain't nobody like you. Uh-uh, uh-uh, babe, wait a minute now, don't, 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 don't turn away from me, don't, don't, don't play me like that. Don't, don't, don't play me like that. Look at me. Look at my eyes. Come on. Come on. Look at my eyes. Because see, baby, the truth is in the eyes. And the eyes don't lie. Look at my eyes. You can look at my eyes and look right down at my soul. And you can tell that it ain't nobody but you. No, honey. Uh, honey, because see, as soon, uh, no, 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 no. I don't sleep with her. We just live together. And, and, and no, no, baby, no, 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 honey, uh-uh. See, so you got this thing all wrong. I lay my head down there at, with her, but my heart is with you. And as soon as I get my little thing straight, and as soon as I get my little papers, it's going to be me and you. Oh, yeah, a man, a man, a man, a man will tell you anything. Huh? I, 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 I told you all before that when I heard the Temptations rapping, it dawned on me that it ain't nothing that a man can't say. 
When a man is trying to get you, he could be the most poetic brother in the whole world. You got a smile so bright. You know you could have been a candle. I'm holding you so tight. You know you could have been a handle. The way you swept me off my feet. You know you could have been a broom. And baby, you so sweet. You know you could have been some perfume. As a matter of fact, when I think about it, when I look at your resume, when I look at you, girl, you could have been anything that you wanted to. And I can tell the way you do the things. Listen, now I'm telling you, ain't nothing that a man won't say to you. Ain't no promise that a man won't make you. Anytime a man will say, I can turn the grayest sky blue. And I can make it rain. What fella on earth can make it rain? Whenever I want it to. And I can build a castle with a single grain of sand. That's some rapping. And I can make a ship sail on dry land. I'm telling you now, listen, now, listen, listen, listen. Brothers, brothers, brothers can say it. Uh, I can fly like a bird in the sky. And I can buy anything that money can buy. But this is the one that gets me above all else. I can turn a river, whole river, into a raging fire. And I can live forever. Here it is, Negro gonna pronounce on himself eternal life. I can live forever if I so desire. And not only that, but after he messes up and you left him and you dropped him, he'll come back to you and say, you better take me back, girl, because I ain't too proud to beg. <laughs> I, I, I ain't too proud to beg. You cannot stop falling for that because men will tell you anything. You know, you know that, that movie out called, uh, whatever what they say, show me the money. Well, when they start rapping to you and trying to get next to you and trying to excite you and trying to get you in the bed and all that kind of stuff, you got to start, show me the ring. Show me the ring. Show me the commitment. Show me the ring. You give a man the ability to determine when you can exhale and that Negro will make sure that you soon asphyxiated. Huh? You'll be running around here so hard broke, it'll be 11.35, you'll have your suitcase in your hands, somebody asks you where you going, you'll be talking about I'm leaving on that midnight train to George. It has never been the will of God for us to find completeness and for us to find joy in anything in this life. Did you hear what I said? It has never been the will of God for us to find full completeness in the things of this life because everything in this life has limits. Everything in this life can only take you so far. Everything in this life is only temporary. Even your loved ones, as much as we love each other, we still have to wave goodbye and give the final words to Gatlin's. You cannot let your house bring you ultimate joy because while you in here shouting tonight, it can burn. You cannot let your car bring you ultimate joy because as sure as you're born, it can crash. You cannot let your job, and you know some folks' jobs just give them all of the pleasure in the world because I'm a supervisor. You ever notice people who are supervisors, you know, they don't even say it right anymore. I'm a, super, I'm a supervisor. You can tell supervisors have a certain walk and a certain look. You can be a supervisor today. And you can be supervising the homeless tomorrow. 
You can't let your friends bring you ultimate joy because they'll fake you out. You can't let your looks bring you certain joy because it'll fade. You can't let your shape bring you ultimate joy because it will get out of control on you. Anything that we let bring us ultimate satisfaction, anything in this life that we let bring us complete joy, anything in this life that we allow to become our reason to exhale, God will make sure that that thing breaks our heart. God, I love you tonight and I need you for 10 more minutes. Because you are, why, why do it? Next week I'm going to talk about where do broken hearts go. I'm going to talk about why do our hearts become broken so easy and how to fix them and how to mend them. But, but what, what happens with this whole thing? You know why our hearts get broken? Because God allows our hearts to be broken to teach us that we have put our weight in on an object that ain't strong enough to hold us. Huh? You would not have sat down on that bench that you're sitting on if you didn't think that it was strong enough to hold you. And so here it is, we put our hopes, our dreams, our emotions, everything that we have, I'll do anything for you. We put everything we have in something that's not strong enough to support us and God allows the pressure of that thing to give and we fall down to the floor so that God can show us and tell us, listen, you have put your trust somewhere and that thing ain't strong enough to hold you. But what I like about God is when that thing drops us and lets us down, God is standing right there, not to say I told you so, not to say shame on you, but God is waiting right there to wipe the tears from our eyes and to pick us up and to say now come on let me show you how to do it right has God ever picked anybody up before is there anybody here that's ever fallen before that's why Jude said when we put our trust in him you can rest assured that you can say now unto him that is able to keep you from falling you are God whose name is jealous We'll make sure that whatever we let bring us complete joy, whatever we let be our reason to breathe, God will make sure that he takes that thing and hurts us with it. Why does he take that thing? He takes that thing because that thing has become our God. Help me out somebody. And since that thing is the closest thing to us, that thing is the only thing that can hurt us. And so God takes the thing that we've let get closest to us, hurt us, so that we can let a new thing get close to us that can't hurt us. If it was Wednesday, they would have heard that. That's why, listen now, that's why men can break your heart easy. Because we find in them a reason to exhale. And, 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 and listen, let me just say this, though. let me say this, let me just say this, I'm going to talk about this a little more next week. Once you done had your heart broken once, that next Negro don't get that chance no more. Oh, help me out, somebody. Once you've had, I'm talking about a good old heartbreak. Because we go into these relationships thinking ain't nothing going to never happen. He ain't gonna never want no, cause, cause he told you I ain't gonna never leave you. I ain't gonna never want nobody else. Ain't nobody near. Don't nobody cook biscuits like you. Don't nobody, uh, ain't nobody, uh, ain't nobody like you. But once you get that heart broken, you discover that you're not gonna give nobody that kind of control of you. You're not gonna give your emotions away no more. Because before your heart is broken, you kind of go into love and in relationships thinking that nothing can ever happen. That it's going to always be like this. It's going to always feel like this. It's going to always be music. It's going to always be April in Paris. Anything that becomes our reason to breathe. Now that, that, that's really, listen y'all, that's real deep. To say that somebody is my reason to breathe. 
Anything that becomes your reason to exhale, anything that becomes your reason to get up in the morning, anything that becomes your reason to dress up, anything that becomes your reason to make up, anything that becomes your reason to smile, anything that becomes your reason to have joy, that thing has too much of you. Huh? And if that thing is exterior, that thing is temporary. And I'm telling you now, if your reason is vested in that thing, that thing is going to pass away. If it does not pass away, that thing, especially if it's another person, it has the capacity to hurt you. That is why Solomon tried to teach us in the book of Ecclesiastics that everything is empty outside of a relationship with God. You cannot find ultimate satisfaction in your work. You cannot find it in pleasure. I don't care how many men you find. I don't care how many spots of yours they could touch that ain't nobody else touched. I don't care how many places next to you that they could find that ain't nobody else found. You know, we always play them finding the secret spot games. I don't care how many secret spots they find. They cannot touch you where God can touch you. They cannot scratch you where God can scratch you. And they cannot make you you feel like God can make you feel then let me close by saying if then everything that is temporary keeps us holding our breath and it does if nothing in this life preacher can be my reason to exhale or my reason to breathe what is it that gives us a reason to exhale? Because I'm waiting. In order to be able to exhale, listen, I got to close, I got to close now. In order to be able to exhale, we got to find something that we can hold on to, and when we grab it, it won't hurt us. Help me out for a minute. In order to find something that will bring us complete joy, we got to find us something tonight that's constant. We have to find something that is not a variable because variables change. We got to find something that's a constant. We have to find something that changes not. We got to find something. If you want to find something that's not going to break your heart, you're going to have to find you something that's stable. You got to find something that's the same today, yesterday, and forever. We got to find something tonight that will not take our breath away by disappointing us, but we got to find something that gives us breath by blessing us. The text says that God breathed into Adam the breath of life. Our reason to exhale, get this now, must be related to our ability to exhale. Since God gives us the ability to inhale, he must somehow be our reason to exhale. Listen, stop wasting breath on something that can break your heart. Stop wasting breath on something that can't give you breath back. If you're going to waste breath on something, make sure that that something is at least able to give you some breath back. You cannot let something be your reason for getting up in the morning if that something can't wake you up in the morning. You cannot ha let something have your heart unless that something is A, incapable of breaking your heart and that something is able to heal a broken heart. You cannot let something be your all unless that something is able to supply your all. Now if it's able to supply your all then it can be your all. But if it cannot supply your all how can we let it be our all? You don't have to go through life hoping and waiting and holding your breath. You can have tonight somebody that you can trust. I came to tell you tonight that I do agree with the movie's basic point. I do believe that you go through life sort of hoping. I do believe that we go through life waiting to exhale. I do believe we go through life holding our breath until we find somebody that we can trust, 
until we find somebody that we can depend on until we find somebody that we can believe in and I came to tell you all tonight that one Friday night when I was lost and on my way to hell I found a reason to exhale I found somebody that I could depend on I found somebody that I could trust I found somebody who loved me if I had money or if I was broke I found somebody who loved me if my hair was cold or if it was all over my head I found somebody who loved me when I was right and when I was wrong I found somebody who loved me when I was up or when I was down and I came tonight to recommend to you tonight Jesus because Jesus is the only one who will hold you and not let you go he's the only one who will say I love you and mean it he's the only one who can pick you up when you're falling down if your reason to exhale is in another man then you got your hopes in the wrong man but I came to tell you tonight that we got to build our hopes on things eternal and then hold on to God's unchanging hands. If you're looking for a reason to exhale, if you're looking for a man to put your trust in, if you're looking for a man to put your hope in, let me recommend Jesus long before you got an education, before you got your condominium, before you got your knee press on nails, before you got your weave to match your hair, while we were yet sinners, that's when Jesus died. He died for us when we were lost and on our way to hell. Shake somebody's hand and say, Jesus is the reason I exhale. Jesus is the reason that I breathe. He wakes me up each morning. He walks with me. What do you mean it's Valentine's Day and I don't have a man? If you've been born again, if you've been born again, you got somebody. He walks with me. He talks with me. He holds me in his arms and say everything will be all right you're talking about sweet nothings you're talking about sweet nothings that he whispers in my ear you know what he tells me let not your heart be troubled he believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions i'm glad I'm glad, I'm glad that I got a reason to exhale. His name is not Mike. His name is not Bob. His name is not Bill. Because Mike, Bob, and Bill won't do. His name is Jesus. Shake somebody's hand and say, Jesus is the reason I inhale. Jesus is the reason I exhale. As a matter of fact, when I think about Jesus and what he's done for me, how he died just to set me free, my feet get light. My feet get light. My feet get light. And I can dance, 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 all night, all night. All night, all night. When I think about Jesus, what he's done for me, he died just to set me free and I could dance, 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 dance all night. Think about Jesus, what he's done for you. You ought to help me praise God too and I can dance, 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 dance all night. All night, 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 all night. 